What's up everybody, it's Tom from Something RS here and welcome to Behind the Scenes for December. So first on the list is Winter Weekends. So what is this? Basically, if you are already a member or wish to become a member within the month of December, then you'll be given a free aura, which when activated will give you 50% bonus experience within the next 30 minutes. And that'll, you'll be able to use that every day. And in addition to that, there's also going to be some special weekends throughout December. So, for example, this weekend, which is happening right now, is the Double Boss Drops weekend. So if you've been wanting to do PVM, then now's a very good time to do that. And there's also going to be Double XP weekends for certain skills, a Double Dungeoneering Token weekend, and a Community Event weekend, which involves a snowman of some sort. And this picture in the middle right here is what the aura will look like when you activate it. It'll give you some pretty little wings if you're interested in that shit. So next up on the list is, you may have already seen this in the behind the scenes video that was released recently, but it's the Tazar Grand Master Quest called The Brink of Extinction. Now, we haven't had a Grand Master Quest in a while, so this will be very interesting to see. And it's the finale of the Tazar storyline. Now it's going to be very tricky and there's going to be a lot of puzzles and combat and the combat will actually fully incorporate the evolution of combat so it won't feel weird and clunky. It should be nice and smooth and along with some of the greatest XP rewards that they've ever given you'll also have access to obsidian armor which you'll be able to smith yourself. And there will also be a brand new single player combat training area. So this image right here is the three different obsidian armor sets that you'll be able to smith. So on the left, we've got the melee set. In the middle, we have the mage set. And on the right hand side, we have the range set. Not too much visual difference between the three in terms of like from the waist down, but I think the main difference is the helmets, so that's how you'll be able to visually distinguish the three different sets. Anyway, so that's that dealt with. The requirements for this quest are pretty high. There'll be 80 defense, sorry pures, but stop limiting yourself, 80 smithing, 72 mining, and you must have completed the Elder Kiln quest. Now on to the next fairly controversial update for this month, which is player-owned ports. Now, this is basically going to be a huge mini game where you'll be able to manage your own port and you'll be able to hire different ships and sailors and adventurers and that kind of thing to go and explore the eastern lands for you and bring you back some rewards and stuff. So the basic concept is you'll have to equip these adventurers that you hire with the right equipment for the job that they're about to go and do and if you equip them properly they'll bring you back more resources and rewards and that kind of thing so you can expand upon your port further and bring in more adventures and stuff like that. So basically to access player owned ports there's going to be a pretty high requirement that this will piss some of you off but I don't really care. You must have at least level 90 in one of the following skills to access player and ports, and that includes herb lore, prayer, rune crafting, thieving, slayer, or fishing. And obviously the more of those skills that you have above level 90, the more adventurers you will have access to and you'll be able to access more of the eastern lands and earn more rewards and such. Now, the rewards that you'll get from this include level 85 equipment for rangers, mages, and warriors. Uh, these, will be, these will need to be crafted yourself, and you'll need level 90 plus in the respective crafting skills. So for the range equipment, you'll need level 90 plus crafting. For the mage set, you'll need 90 plus rune crafting, and for the melee set, you'll need 90 plus smithing. There's also going to be the newest highing, highest healing food ever, and so that'll heal more than rock tails currently do, and that'll require 90 plus cooking to cook. And there's going to be new scrimshaw items, which will... Now, this is quite controversial as well. Excuse me. 
there's going to be a new pocket slot for equipment and the scrimshaw items will go in that slot and they'll give you some skilling and combat benefits so it's nice to see that we've got equipment that will give skilling benefits as well as uh, combat benefits and that those items will require 90 plus fletching to make okay so the next update on the list is called astray in a manger and this will be the christmas event which is available to both free to play players and members not gonna lie i couldn't give less shits about this if i tried but the one thing that's interesting about this part of the article is that they said they're going to be making changes to the refer a friend system which will offer extra rewards when introducing others to RuneScape. So that's pretty interesting. You might want to start thinking about telling your friends about RuneScape and them finding out how, how much of a nerd you are. Okay, so the next update on the list is the pet update. Now, some of you may not actually be aware that you can have a pet in RuneScape. I know it's a weird concept, but it's they're like familiars, except they don't expire after a certain amount of minutes. Um, you're meant to sort of feed them and just interact with them and that kind of thing. It's a bit basic at the minute, but they're going to change the pet system so that you don't have to feed pets anymore to keep them alive. And there's going to be more interaction options, so it's more interesting to have a pet following you. And of course, with every update, there's a Solomon addition to it, so there's going to be two new pets added to the Solomon store when this comes. And finally on the list for members only is a god statue construction diversion thingamabob. This will be a monthly distraction and, and diversion, that's a bit of a mouthful, um, which will earn construction, slayer and prayer experience. Basically you'll be building statues and you'll get experience, what else is there to say? It's available to anyone of any construction level. And that's basically it for this article. Some interesting stuff. Now, just for those who are interested, a little channel update. I am going to still revise my Glacors guide. It will just take a bit longer than I anticipated because I've got some university deadlines coming up. And so I'm a bit occupied, like too occupied to make that video at the minute because it takes a lot of editing and stuff like that. But anyway, that's it for this article. If you've liked the video, thumbs it up and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.